Recently, Murray White sent me an email asking me if it was possible to do everything that was in the Photoshop tutorial and could it be done in Affinity Photo. Now, the, photo, uh, the original Photoshop tutorial was done by the training, Photoshop training channel it was called how to remove anything from a photo and the link is here and I will add a link in the description for this video and I do suggest you watch it because you can see what they you know try to do better and then you can adapt affinity photo tools to do the same sort of thing but I don't want to make an exact copy of a video that already exists um, and, and I don't have access to the original image, so I couldn't really do it anyway. Um, but I just want to look at those techniques that we used in that Photoshop tutorial and how you can use them in Affinity Photo. Now, I myself have made videos in the past which have covered a lot of these t topics, as has many other people, but I'm just trying to sort of maybe just bring them together and make a sort of more simpler video for beginners. So although the idea is to remove something from a picture, what you're actually doing is sampling areas that you do want and put them over the areas that you don't want. So those sort of tools, the clone tool, patch tool and inpainting tool will do all the similar sort of things but just in slightly different ways. So just have a quick look at this is the original video Photoshop tutorial and the point here was to keep the model and to remove the car but to use the cloning in painting patch tools and what have you to sample bits of the building and put it where the car was so it just looked like it was just the building behind the girl and not the car like I said I would advise you to watch the video from beginning to end because it is interesting, quite good and pretty much all the tools that you can see in this video can be used in Affinity Photo maybe just in slightly different places in different ways but hopefully my video will help you um, find where those particular tools are. Now I'm going to use a very very basic image which I got from pixabay.com and I will add the link to this in the description as well so you can use this to follow what I'm going to do and just something to practice on. So that's the introduction over. Let's just go back to this one and so this is the wall image and as you can see I've met I've got, there's the original background and I've just duplicated it five times and I've renumbered them. I may end up making more but I'm starting with five and I'm just going to use a different layer to demonstrate different things. So I'm going to start at the top and the first thing that we are going to look at is um, cloning. Now the clone stamp tool is this one over here which looks like the the old rubber stamps that you used to get but it's just called the clone brush tool or you can just press S on your keyboard and it will select that. Now I'm doing this in on a PC um, I don't think I use too many um, other keys but if you're on a Mac I think control is a command key and Alt key is an option key. So if I do use those, they're the keys that you use, you need to use. So the clone tool, what the clone tool basically does, it will just sample an area that you do want and then you come over to the area you don't want and it will paint the area you do want into the area you don't want. So first of all, I'm going to I've got the opacity at 100 and I've got a, let me just raise this hardness up a bit, let's go up to about 80. And the brush size for this particular picture I can make it quite big, um, but for certain things you may want to make it smaller. Now as you can see, 
at the moment it is sort of got it's changing the image inside that circle as I'm moving around that's because it's remembered where I last sampled from so I need to make a sample area so I'm going to you just need to press the alt key on a PC and that will change to a crosshairs and if I place that say this top corner here and then click that will be the sample area so if I come over here now and I roughly line up the bricks and then start painting and keep my, just keep my finger on the mouse button and just keep painting it will continue to sample from the other side like that All right, so there's, there's obviously some discrepancies in color like down this edge here because it is lighter over here than it was over there but you can see the basic principle I mean, you may need to uh, if I had done this on a different layer I could have then altered the contrast and things like that so let me just press ctrl and z to get rid of all of that so this time I will add an extra layer above that layer and again I'm on the clone tool so what I'm going to do now is I'm, at the moment it's got current layer so I'll just click on current layer and below so what this will do it will paint the area being cloned onto this blank layer but it will be sampling it from the layer below now, also this time because what I did before it made like an exact copy as you see it but I want to sort of flip the window so it's going to be a reversal so these holes this hole that's in this window here and that window there especially this one it will then be on the opposite side rather than just being an exact copy um, of this particular window and to do that up here it's got flip I'm going to come down to horizontal so again I'm going to sample so I'm going to press the alt key I'm going to sample from this area here and again I'm going to start up here and just start painting there we go so as you can see the hole that was on the right in this lower right is now on the lower left so it has flipped it over horizontally although it's sampling from the same sort of area and as this is on a different layer I can now add an adjustment let's try the let's try brightness on contrast and I don't want this to affect the whole image I just want it to affect this particular layer and so I'm going to drag this down so it is now part of this layer that has only got that window on so when I adjust the contrast and brightness it is only affecting that area there um, maybe the brightness and contrast tool is not necessarily the best tool to get those to match that's not too bad the, the bricks are less obviously cloned from there to there so it's not a perfect match and if you wanted you could clone out say these holes in the window so they don't look exactly the same so I'm still on the clone tool and I'm on that layer there and I'm going to reduce the size of the brush which is just using the either the left or right mouse um, square brackets which are the two keys next to the P key on the keyboard you can also alter the size from up here as well but it's easier to do it from the keyboard so I can go there and I'm still sampling like current layer and below 
but I don't need to do that in this case. I can just use this current layer. So if I sample this window here, for example, this one there might be a better option. So if I press the Alt key and we come up to about there. So I'm now sampling from that area and I'm just going to paint over that one there. So that gets rid of the hole on that window and this particular hole, if I sample from the window below, so again I'll press the Alt key and sample from, start sampling from there. Come up to here, I can then, oh, I've got to remember it's still, it's still flipped this one, so I need to, let me press Ctrl and Z on that particular bit. Let's put this back to none, try that again. So this should be better, it should just stay as it. Right. So that's the thing to remember is if you want to change how you're sampling things you may need to put this back to none rather than it reversing what you've done. So again you could have sampled like this part here, let me press alt on that one and get rid of that broken glass bit there. So those two windows although they are sort of copies of one or the other, they do not now look exactly the same because I've got rid of a lot of the broken areas. So that is basically the clone um, tool. So let me get rid of that one. And in fact, I can still use number five. Um, so now we're going to have a look at the patch tool. Now the patch tool is in with the in painting tool. It's on the same menu, little white arrow down here. And we come to the patch tool. Now the patch tool, as it stands, is slightly a bit ungainly in the sense that once I click and you drag, I personally find it very difficult to control the area I'm selecting. So if I, I mean, it, it's very difficult to make a, a selection in my opinion that way let me press ctrl and z to get rid of that i find it easier to make the selection first so i'm going to make it with the rectangular marquee tool but you could use if you want to do it by hand like the freehand selection tool you could use um say if you wanted to draw around a tree for example you can It'd be a lot easier just to do it freehand, but as this is a fairly square and basic image, the marquee tool I'm going to use, I'm just going to use the bricks as a guideline of where to select. So I'm um, selecting that image there. And then if I come to the patch tool, it will use the selection that I have made. Now as you move your, the cursor around, it will select that area that where the cursor is and put it in to where your selection is. So it's just a case of finding an area that's similar, lining up the bricks. Let's go with there and then double click a couple of times and it will place the bricks from over here because you can see that brick there that's got the crack in it is also there so that is how you could use the patch tool again you could probably have done this on another layer it might have been a better option and then you'd be able to blend it in better but basically that is what the patch tool does um, it's probably better used on something like this where there's a n um, not a lot of detail as such it's easy to just patch one area onto another it's probably a sort of um, 
not as refined as some of the other tools so if it's a an, an easy area to uh, clone or copy the patch tool might be a good option so that let me sh shut that one down and we'll come down to number four now the next one is the in painting tool now by default this is normally the one that is set here and again I've got the let me bring the opacity up to a hundred and I'm gonna I'm not gonna bring the hardness up to a hundred but I'm gonna come up to about eighty percent just so that it, it doesn't feather it in completely um, it's not you know, it won't be such straight hard lines so then it's just a case of the size of the brush at the moment it's quite a decent size for me so I'm just going to keep my finger on the mouse button and paint over this and as you can see it will paint a sort of red tint over the top so all that area there it's going to be removed and the computer or the program will once I release the mouse button which I'm going to do now it will then think about it and get pixels from nearby that are similar and put it over the top so again with this sort of background the in painting tool does a really good job and you'd be hard pressed to know you know where that where they program has selected it from um, looking at that brick that I'm over there it's obviously copied it from here so the, the computer does all the work for you so let me just get rid of that one come down to number three there is a, a very similar way to do this and it's again still using in painting but you could select an area again whichever tool but I'm going to use this one and so it's got this area selected and then um, I keep forgetting where it is oh, there. on the in the edit menu come down to in paint and again the computer will do the work for you so it will in paint the selected area rather than the brush tool now it may not have done as good a job in this particular case because the areas are not lined up now let me just press ctrl and d to get rid of the selection area Hang on. there we go um but once i've taken that selection i mean obviously there are some problems with this with the lining up of the lines but you could probably get around that some way but that's basically showing you how you can in-paint either using the brush or using a selection. So that is looking looked at the clone brush tool, the patch tool, and the in-painting tool. So let me get this one down. So we're now on to number two two now this next one is not necessarily part of the same video that in the photoshop it's not something he really touched on but it is something that you can use um, if say for example the picture that you are working on the building is at an angle and it sort of starts off larger and nearer the camera and gets further away you will want to change the perspective but you will also need to sort of include the copy of the window in this case or whatever it is so for this I'm going to use a perspective um, tool which is found underneath the frame text tool so I have my two layers that I have remaining here at the moment and what we're aiming for is something like that which is made up 
just from the background image. So coming back to this one, I'm going to start with the, so if you've done this you would need to make, make two copies of this, but there, there are other ways of doing this, but this is just a sort of a fairly quick and simple way of doing this. Come to the perspective tool and it will put a grid over the layer that you are on. You can turn off the grid if you want, but it's easier with the grid. And then you just come up to one of the corners and you move that around. This is a lot of this is trial and error. So we're going to go something like that. Again, it's just a case of lying in, lying, lining up. So I'm trying to concentrate on three things at the same time here. Let me just bring this. There we go. zoom out slightly so I can see this better. Alright, it's control and zero. Mm. Control and zero, not control and O. So zoom back in again. And I'll just click apply on there. So as you can see, if, if like I said, if this was a, a building that had a different perspective, you can alter the perspective of an area that you want to copy, clone or what have you. I know the proportions from this window and that window are wrong, but it, hopefully it will give you the idea of how you can alter the perspective of a certain area just using the perspective tool and you could have used that to clone out um, the certain area. So again, what I do is I'll come down to the layer number one, and I'm going to again come to the perspective tool, and this time I'm going to move this down. To the bottom here. Might need to actually move this layer. I forgot how I've done the the floor of this, but. Let's go to there. Click apply and then I could have cloned like I did when I did um, this one here. I just cloned out. The window on the floor. I must admit I can't remember how I position that oh there we go bring that down here um with a bit more fiddling and i took a bit more care i could have got this a bit better but you get the idea of how using the perspective tool you can alter and replace certain parts of an image to cover up an area that you don't want anymore sorry i made a bit of a mess of that one but you hopefully get the idea of that you can use the perspective tool sometimes to help you replace something with a part of a the image um, you know that's on another layer hopefully that all makes sense and hopefully this will cover a lot of what Murray White wanted looking at the different tools that you can use to help 
edit and re remove something from an image. So thank you for watching and goodbye.